good evening, everyone. To begin our evening service, we'll turn to page 637 in our hymn books, and we'll sing the chorus, I Just Keep Trusting My Lord, two times. When you find it, if you could please stand. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives a song. Though storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Though storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives a song. Though storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Though storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. Thank you. Amen. One thing about our Lord, he will never, ever fail. Uh, we may make some mistakes when we get away from him, but what a challenge and encourage to stay right there next to him because one thing about him, he'll never fail. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that you are God that never fails. You're a powerful God and uh, most omnipotent. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your care, and your love for us. And, Father, we thank you for what we heard in the Sunday school hour and the Sunday morning message. And Father, they were a tremendous blessing and touched my heart. And Father, I just pray that as we gather together again tonight, that you would speak to our hearts once again, Father. Challenge us as ch your children and draw us closer to you. And if any come in amongst us that's not saved, maybe sense the urgency, the need to repent of sin this very day and become born again before it's too late. And Father, we want to take special time to pray for those who are traveling, those who are here and uh, working on the building and uh, doing lots of things uh, tomorrow, Father, that uh, you would give them safety as they travel and uh, safety as they labor for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray and thank you. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. For our next song, we'll turn to page 237 and we'll sing the first, second, and last verse about the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Verse 2. Was it for crimes that I have done, he groaned upon the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, 
and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Last verse. But drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. For our last hymn, we'll turn to page 311, and we'll sing the first and second verse of More About Jesus. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Verse 2. More about Jesus let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God my teacher be. Showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. Thank you for your singing. Thank you, Isaiah. Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 to 24 is going to be where Pastor will be speaking to us from. Again, that's Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 to 24. Uh, by way of announcement, we do want to make you aware that uh, this upcoming Saturday is when Lighthouse um, Baptist will be having uh, some people come over. Uh, we're looking at canvassing the area a little bit, uh, knocking on doors, uh, making uh, the community aware of what God is doing here. Uh, so if you have that opportunity, please join us uh, as we uh, seek to make that presence known. Uh, many will be coming throughout the week. It's been, there's been a number of projects that have been underway, uh, many things to come, and uh, God is, is moving. Uh, this is the time that uh, we know that other things have, have come to fruition that we've been praying about for quite some time, and uh, we can see them uh, taking shape. So it's an exciting time, and uh, a time, uh, nonetheless, that we should be still aware of, our, of souls that are surrounding us. So... Um, Please keep that in mind uh, throughout the week for prayer and for action uh, and, and allow God to do his work. At this time, let's go to God in a word of prayer and ask him for his blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you once again for this opportunity and this service, Lord, to, uh, to, to, to set aside, to quiet our minds, our hearts, so that we can uh, take in your word. Lord, we ask that you would bless the pastor as he speaks. Uh, may he have liberty through your spirit. Uh, help our hearts to be open and receptive. Uh, Lord, once again, cause us, Lord, to uh, be able to uh, pray for the many events that have been happening, uh, swirling around us. There's many things in motion at this time, and we're thankful that you are in complete control. Lord, we ask you to bless this offering. May it be a, a, a pleasing sight to you, and uh, may it be used to further your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen.
Amen. We're in Matthew tonight, chapter 6. I don't know about you, but this morning's message and the Sunday school lesson uh, touched my heart. And uh, it was it was good. Um, and God was gave us what I needed. He gave us what we needed, I believe, and um, can continue to feed off of that. I'm going to go back and listen to it again. It was good. And uh, thank you, Brother Shannon, for what you do in our Sunday school hour. And that message this morning, that lesson was tremendous. And, uh, great, valuable lessons there. Do what God's got for you right there in front of you. Don't try going and finding the big thing. Do what God's put in front of you. And that's key. A lot of people miss that and mess up because they've tried to make the will of God happen or go opposite of the will of God and make a mess of things. Uh, Matthew 6, <clears throat> that's not the message I'm preaching tonight. I'll get to where I'm supposed to be. Uh, verse 22 says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thine whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for the reading of your word, the songs of praise. And Father, I pray that we've already been challenged by it. Father, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross and give me the words to say, Father, but may you speak what needs to be said this night. May it challenge us as Christians and draw us closer to you. Father, we pray for that lost soul, that one that we may come across that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Father, help them to sense the need, the urgency to repent of sin this very day, because this is the day, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Father, don't let it pass them by. May they repent of sin this very day and become born again before it's eternally too late. We'll praise you and we'll love you for it. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray and thank you. Amen. As we continue our look at the Sermon on the Mount, there's a host of things here, and uh, we haven't begun to cover the half of it. We're just kind of going a couple verses at a time, a little bit here, a little bit there, but if you took all the time that was necessary, we'd be here for quite a while. But the verse we're looking at tonight in particular, no man can serve two masters, verse 24, but how often do we see man try to do that? How often have we seen people that are in church but living like the world. I've, I've dealt with many teenagers over the years and their worldly music didn't match up with God's word. Uh, the, the way that they behaved at school didn't line up with God's word. And time after time again, that testimony, their character was brought to light, what they were doing and how they were behaving. And there was always a teenager that would come back to me. They say they act this way in front of you, but at school, it's known, you, you've written an epistle, known and read of all men, and you're seen. Not that we do it for others. We don't do it to please man, but we should be pleasing God. My children, and I, I apologize, I'll probably use the examples too much, but uh, they, I expect them to listen to mom and dad. I don't expect them to hear me, but also try to obey the house down the road. That's not their home. That's not their father. That's not their mother. Their job is to listen to their father and their mother. The Bible makes it clear that uh, to the lost world, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. But that is not us as children of God. It's not our place to do the lust of Satan. He was once our father when we were lost in sin. But now our father is king of kings and lord of lords. He sits on the holiest of all thrones and None is above him and none is preferred before him. He is God of all gods and he is my father. I don't belong to Satan. Those chains have been broken, but how often have, do we find where someone has entangled themselves again in matters and in things that should not be mentioned among us? We find a, a passage like that in Corinthians, things that should not be named among the church. Paul, Paul would tell them that it's commonly known of you 
that there's friction, that there's things happening here. It's, it's well known. This is your testimony. This is what has gotten back to me. How could there be friction when we're of the same spirit? How can there be friction when we should be of the same, of one accord and of one mind? The mind of Christ, the word of God is what we are basing as our authority and how we are, are following and, and, and trusting God and walking in the steps that he has ordered. We shouldn't be in contention because we should line up right here. But you want to know where the contention comes in? When you got one foot in the house of God and another foot in the world. When you're straddling the fence, that's where contention comes in. My dad taught me something years ago said, you can also tell where the contention always starts. It normally has a baseline. There's a person that's always the one in the argument. How is it this one is always in the middle of this thing? How is it this one in particular? It doesn't matter who else is with because somebody in there is arguing for God. And then that other person is kind of straddling the fence. And that one person every time keeps coming up. Hmm. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because you got one foot in the world and one foot in the house of God. And you won't do both well. You won't do both well. Many may have one foot in the world and another in the church. And they literally spend their days in confusion. They never accomplish anything for God. And their lives are a mess because they have not wholly and totally given themselves to God. They're trying to please their friends. They're trying to keep the world happy. But also I go to church, I read my Bible, I pray I'm doing good, right? I don't want to straddle the fence. Last week, we looked at the fact that a man's treasure is where his heart is. And we looked at where our treasure is. The man that treasures God will serve God. A man that truly loves God will serve God. A man that truly loves God will follow God. A man that truly loves God will Honor God. If you love me, here it is. Keep my commandments. If you love me, you love me, then keep my commandments. Obey my word. Follow me. Forsake all else. Paul said, I count all things but dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that stuff does not matter. All the accolades and whatever the world can give you and the pats on the back, when it comes to the word of God, it doesn't matter. Those that try to keep a foot in the house of God and a foot in the world and trying to keep everybody happy and straddling the fence and trying to maintain, they're, they're unstable. The Bible calls it a double-minded man. The man that tries to serve two masters. He's trying to love God, but if he was truly trying, he would. But he also has this love for something in the world. But God says, love not the world. But you know that thing that I'm drawn to. You know, every time I try to do good, this thing comes up. Every, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Here I am. I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to get in the house of God. And here comes that thing that troubles you. That sin that does so easily beset us. Here it is. And well, I, uh, hey, you're going to follow God or you're going to follow that? Make up your mind. Make a decision. Joshua said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. But you're not going to do well trying to serve both. James 1.8 says a double mind is unstable. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Nobody likes instability. My wife wouldn't like it if there was a check this week, but we don't know if we're going to have one next week. It's instability. Instability causes a lack of peace. 
a lack of comfort. It brings discomfort. It brings confusion. It brings question. It brings doubt. And that's how many people are living their lives in confusion, full of questions, full of doubt. Because instead of wholly following God, well, I did good last week, but you know, I'm doing this this week. People for peer pressure will do what someone else says to do. Well, you know, this is what, this is what the norm is today. We don't want to discuss the norm today. It makes me sick what today's norm is. God's not pleased by it. God says he's angry with the wicked every day. And that didn't just start with some of today's normality. Been that way. Oh, don't talk about how angry God. We, we don't want to hear that. Now, now, you, now you, you're being messy, preacher. We don't want to hear all that. God said it. He's angry with the wicked every day. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. His love and mercy is proven in the fact that he hasn't poured out his wrath upon you today. That's the love and mercy of God. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, how is it you always running with this party over here and they're always drinking and you're always with them? You just so happen to be on the boat with them while they're drinking, but you're fishing. Yeah, yeah I, I was just going to fish. You know how many times I could have used that excuse? You know how much this preacher likes to fish? But you know what I didn't need? My testimony sake, while I'm throwing a line out, somebody's posing in the background with a camera like this, with a beer bottle and me behind them. Because they'll do it. Your testimony's at stake. Some things are worth more than fishing. Worth more than going to do something that's not sin. Abstain from the appearance. The appearance of, you may not even be doing it, but you're near it, around it. How many people have been convicted for something they just happened to be around that night? Well, you might not have broken in the house, but you were with the guys that broke in it. You ran when they ran too. You were with them. And then you hear your Miranda rights. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Whoa, I, I did, but I didn't do anything. You were with them. You were there. You didn't speak up against it. You didn't walk away from it. No, you didn't indulge, but you sure didn't declare how angry you were that this was taking place. You didn't call the cops and say, hey, uh, this guy that I thought was my buddy just broke this window and you need to come get him. And remember that I called you. This isn't me doing this. No, you didn't do that. You sat right there and said, man, what are, you, what are you doing? Man, get out of there. No, you need to be high telling it. Do like Joseph did, run, leave the coat. But no, you know, I just, I didn't want to hurt their feelings. And then you fell in the sin. But I was just, you know, I was trying to keep everybody happy. You'll be unstable. Well, I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm human too. I can laugh at the jokes. Oh, really? You think God's laughing? He's not laughing. When you do the things that they do, you're in agreement. When you partake of what they partake of, you're in agreement. When you don't speak up against sin, you're in agreement. When you don't speak out against homosexuality or murder, killing children, you're in agreement. It's our job as the children of God to speak up and speak out. I don't care who don't like it. John the Baptist said, it's wrong for you to have your brother's wife. Why would he, how dare he, boy, he just rocked the boat. How dare, but he spoke the truth. Abstain from all appearance of evil. 
It's important for the church that the appearance of evil not be in here. We don't want to be associated with it. We don't want to be involved in it. Take your junk and do it over there, but don't bring it here. Don't make me have to like what you're doing. I'm not going to like it. Don't make me speak up to you in particular. Go, just go. Go do your stuff. Don't broadcast it to me. Don't bring it in the house of God. I don't want to hear it. But isn't that what the world's doing today? Hey, church, guess what? We're going to flaunt this and do this right here in front of you. And how dare you speak up? Well, I'm going to speak up because you're speaking to me. Don't get your feelings hurt when I speak up. Because I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm not going to sit here and straddle the fence. Exodus 23, 7 says, keep far from me a false matter. But how many times do people get close to that false matter? To that lie? To that wickedness? To that thing that is contrary to God? The man says he loves God, but his actions prove his love for the world. He's a double-minded man. He runs to it instead of away from it. Instead of abstaining, he appears where the evil is. Man, how come that when this comes up, your name pops up with it? How come every time there's an affiliation with this, it's you? How come every time this happens, you're involved? Because you've got your foot in it. James 4 verse 4 says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. 1 John 2 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now let me be clear on something. God loves each and every person here. He's saying, he's not saying don't love people. And people will sit there and say, God is a God of hate because of that verse right there. See, he, he's just so hateful because he told that church not to love us. No, that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is that worldly mess you're doing, that stuff that's of the devil, not to love that. But God loves the sinner. People try to make something else of what God's word says, and that's not what God said. God didn't say walk around hating people. Just hate anybody that doesn't love me. That's not, that's not what God said. It's not my job to hate someone. My job is to love them and bring them to Christ. How can I lovingly bring them to Christ if I hate them? And what a shame if a child of God says, I hate you. Well, God loved you, buddy. He loved you. How is it you can say you hate someone else? No, this church doesn't hate anyone. I was just as lost as anyone else that is lost and needed God to show me his love and mercy and grace. The double-minded man cannot please God. As we studied in Galatians, they turned around and was trying to please those that came in and told them to keep the law and the traditions and the customs. But Galatians 1, 10, Paul said, he asked this question, for do I now persuade men or God? Who are you trying to convince? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. They told the disciples, y'all need to stop speaking in Jesus' name. Y'all need to stop preaching. They said, we ought, to, we ought to obey God rather than men. You know, you're going to be told some things. You, you shouldn't speak out against adultery. You shouldn't be so um, adamantly against drunkenness. It's just a little alcohol. It's just something that draw, drew a dad away from his children. That's what it is. It's just something that caused a wreck that took a loved one. It's just something that put somebody in, in the pits of hell because they kept consuming a bottle and they killed someone in the process. How many people have taken alcohol or drugs into their system and then they did something and they wake up behind bars unaware of what they did. An attorney has to sit there and tell them, these are your charges. 
I did what? Yeah, while you were in your drunken stupor, this is what you did. You wonder why I'm against it? Because God's not for it, that's why. Time and time again, we see the effects of it. When Noah got drunk, what happened? When Lot was drunk, what happened? And we can go on and on and on about what alcohol has done. It's destroyed homes. It's destroyed lives. There are children that don't know their fathers and their mothers behind alcohol. It's just one little drink. No, it's not. It's more than that. It's a snare. It's a trap. And you won't please God with your little alcohol here and there. You'll be consumed by that thing and not pleasing God. He cannot serve God because he's been caught pleasing men. And there's evidence of instability in his thoughts. Starts up here. One minute you see somebody in church, the next thing you know, they start missing a little bit. Well, what's going on? Well, I, I just, something's going on in my life right now. Satan's messing with you in your mind. And he's pulling you away. Instability in his actions. You don't see him anymore. Instability in his beliefs. You once believed this way. You did run well. Who hath hindered you? You were doing good. You were doing fine. What happened? You, you had, you were all in at one point, but now demons hath forsaken me, having, here it is, loved this present world. Something else meant more to him than God. Instability in his faith. Ah, I just don't know what I believe anymore. Have you ever heard that? I, I just don't know what I, what, what to think anymore. I, why is it that Adam, Adam, let me ask you this. Where art thou? You think God was unaware of where he was? Hey, Adam, where did it get you? It's got you full of questions, doesn't it? It's got you full of doubt and fear, doesn't it? It's got you messed up, doesn't it? Where you at? I'll tell you where you are, full of instability in every aspect of your life. And why? Not because of God. God didn't make you insta inst um, instable that way, if that's the word. Bear with me. Unstable. There it is. Thank you. My helper. I love you. Unstable. God didn't make you that way. As a matter of fact, God has us rooted and grounded and settled. But here we are, we, ah, you know, it's just a, oh, uh, <clears throat> that wasn't the solid rock I was standing on just now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seeking to please man, you won't be the servant of Christ. And you will not please God. See, God wants your whole heart. Revelations 3, verse 15. Let's turn there. Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3 and verse 15. It says, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You ever took something in your mouth that was so bad you just spit it out? I know we don't like to think or picture that in our minds right now, but God doesn't like to think or picture that either. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, that was nasty. Hey, 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 hey. You're getting a good picture of what God tastes when you're straddling the fence. And you're thinking everything's fine. And God says, oh, oh, that's terrible. That's not fruit that I like. You want to go out there and... <laughs> Get a fig tree. My mom's got two big fig trees out there in the yard. You want to bite into one of those figs and it tastes halfway like a banana? 
Ugh. That is not what I expected from this. Hey, God has an anticipation and an expectation of where we ought to be. And it's not what he didn't create us to be. I promise you, I wouldn't pick from that fruit again if that fig halfway tasted like a banana. I'd be more like, Mama, we need to cut that one down. Didn't Jesus say something like, cut it down? Why cumbereth it the ground? Why? Because I, every time I go to this thing, I don't, I don't see. It's not producing. I mean, it's full of leaves, but there's no fruit. It's it, The evidence, the, the possibility is there, but three years I've come and nothing. He said, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest that thou art wretched and miserable. Knowest not, rather, that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. God, as we heard in a message recently, chastens. And why is that? Because he's trying to get you back to where you know you should be. You're well aware of where you should be. When you're straddling the fence, you are well aware. The Holy Spirit of God is dealing with you, telling you this isn't where I need to be. I know I need to do better. God's dealing with you. That chastening hand, it guides us back. So before God does any chastening, choose to serve. Choose to serve God. Choose to live for God and be faithful to do it. Because when I would do good, it's still there. Evil is present with me. You've got to get up every day and purpose to serve God. That's point number two. Choose to serve. It's a choice. You don't accidentally get up and trip into the gas station and slip and slide and fall down to the freezer section or refrigerator, whichever it's in. And the door just stumbles open and an 18 pack fall in your lap. And then you slip all the way back to the register and your wallet falls out and your debit card swipes and your hand fell across the machine and punched in your pen all at the same. It was all an accident. No. Uh -uh. You don't accidentally serve God either. People don't just trip and fall in the church. You don't trip and fall to your Bible. It's intentional. You don't trip and fall to your knees and start talking to God. It's intentional. I purpose to serve God. Every one of us knows what happens when a person chooses not to serve God. When they choose not to obey God, when they don't hear God's word, we know the end of that person. We're well aware. But do we, knowing all of that, make the conscious choice to serve God? Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with all of thy heart and thy strength, thy might. Are we serving God? Are we giving God our all? Are we kind of, I sang old victory in Jesus, but I um, hadn't really shown the victory here. I sang about the power in the blood, but I'm, I'm not really showing his power in my life. Boy, we want him seen. Every man makes a choice. 
We choose to serve God or we choose to serve sin. We choose to please God or we choose to please men. We choose to be faithful to God or we choose to be unfaithful. We choose to be like Christ or we choose to be like the world. We choose to study the scripture and take in what God has given us or to live like the world. We choose to love God or we choose to love the world. We choose to be the friend of God or we choose to be a friend of the world. We choose to be the enemy of God or we choose to be an enemy to the world. We all, every day, make a choice. In the morning, you're going to be faced with some decisions. There are times, let me tell you, we want to get in the flesh. People make you want to get in the flesh sometimes. Boy, boy, there are things that people do and you just, God, just one time, let me, one time, God, then I'll just ask for forgiveness later. No, 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 no. Choose to serve God. Choose to live for God. Be the one that people say, that man right there, that woman right there, it is evident to me that the power of God, the hand of God is upon them. That God is evident in their life. And they're not going to say that when you choose to get in the flesh. Christ chose to drink of the cup. Christ chose to carry his cross. Christ chose to stay on the cross. That's not easy. Christ chose to die. That's not easy. But Paul said, I die daily. You mean I? What I, 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 what I would do in my flesh, I, I, I need to be doing with God. Yes, yes, die to the flesh. Live to God. It is a choice. Joshua 24, 15. He tells him, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day. Make a decision. Here's a line in the sand. Choose you this day who you will serve. He says, but as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I don't know what everybody else is going to do. Not everybody that comes into the house of God is going to choose to serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, by the grace of God, on his holy and omnipotent throne, I can't do it without his grace. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm following God. Who are you going to follow? I choose to serve him. Make a conscious decision today to serve God. Look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And verse 6. <clears throat> James chapter 4 and verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and something beautiful happens. He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Hmm. Yeah, God says a double-minded man can, can, can go from being that way. <laughs> to fully serving God. He's got to cleanse his hands and purify his heart. If you're straddling the fence, repent. Verse nine, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves therefore in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. You know, I see in scripture, I've seen in people's lives that I've witnessed personally, not just in scripture. What happens to the wicked? We've all seen it. Another lesson my dad taught me, 
You think you want to go a direction? You think that's the way you want to go? Look at others who have gone that way. Not just when they went. Look at how it ended for them. And when you do that, you're going to see that either that way pleased God or it didn't. And the lesson was for us to realize that you may think that there's joy in sin. There is at first for a season. See, the thing about sin is that season comes to an end. See, they don't tell you about how that, that wine, when you looking upon it, it, at the last, it bites like a serpent, stingeth like an adder. They don't tell you about waking up with wounds and, and sores and bruises. You don't know where it came from. Falling off of bar stools and having a black eye because you fell off a bar stool or busting a limb because you fell off a bar stool and having to have surgery because you had some alcohol. You don't hear those stories. The commercials make it look glamorous. They don't show you sloppy drunks and children crying because they don't know where dad is or if he's coming home that night. No, they make it look, we're on the beach having some alcohol and having fun, chilling in the sun while their children are perishing. While their grandchildren never get to meet their grandparents. Wow, children have been left to themselves bringing their parents to shame. Why a community and people can't seem to break chains because all they see is drunkenness in their homes and their families and somebody has to get up and follow God or it will continue to the next generation. Where are the people that will get out of that mess and say, I choose to follow God? Time and time again, I've seen it. Those teenagers would come to me with tears in their eyes. And it was the hardest thing at first for me to tell them, but it became the most important thing I learned. You don't like what happened to you, do you? You don't like that your dad's a drunk, do you? You don't like that your dad left home, do you? You don't like that you don't know where your mom, well, don't do it to somebody else. Preacher, that's hard. No, it is fact. Because I don't want what's happened to you to happen to yours. But you can't see that right now. All you see is what you're dealing with. That's another hard lesson my dad taught me. My dad was crying in the street saying, I'll never, ever, 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 ever do this to my children. Where did that come from? It was done to him. It was done to him. The stories I've heard, I don't think I've repeated to my children what their grandfather endured. And his vow before God under a street lamp in the middle of the night, trying to sleep, with tears in his eyes saying, God, if you get me through this, I'll never do this to mine. My dad found out that my mom was pregnant with me. And he kept his vow to God. He dropped out of college, he was playing basketball. And he was good, but he left it. He got me and my mom and took us to church. And he raised me for God. He could have backed away on that promise. But it's so important that you make a conscious decision. You could say, you know, my basketball is important to me. I, I could go pro. You know, I, I, everybody, everybody knew my dad when he played basketball. Your dad was so and so. Yeah, man, your dad could dunk. Man, your dad could do this. Yeah, my dad left it all to raise me. I see what happens when a person walks away from God. I choose to walk with God. 
I choose to talk with God. I choose to read my Bible. I choose to be in church. Hey, some people don't think Sunday school is important. I'll tell you, if you don't think it's important, you, don't, you didn't hear what we heard this morning. I choose to be in Sunday school. I choose to be a soul winner. I choose to be a servant of God. I choose to be a blessing in the church. I choose to stand faithful. I choose to be victorious by faith in Christ. It is a choice. It's not by our might, but it is our choice. By God's grace. Psalms 100 verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. You can tell when somebody's happy as they serve God. You can tell when somebody's straddling the fence. You can tell when somebody's heart is out there, but Jesus said they honor me with their lips. They, they do. They, they are honoring me with their lips. What they say sounds good, but their heart is far from me. God's well aware. You're not pulling one over on him. I want you to know if you're considering straddling the fence, or maybe you are straddling the fence, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Don't destroy your life. Young people are doing it every day. Every day. Don't destroy your life. Blessings come when you truly serve God. Isaiah 33 verse 15, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. He's confident. He's stable. Why? He's not straddling the fence. He's not out there in the world. He's on the solid rock. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Where did Satan get Eve in the garden? In the mind. Well, it looks good. I mean, it's, it's desirable. I mean, I, I, I've been looking at this fruit. That's where Satan gets you. It starts off a thought. It ends... No, it, it doesn't end with the action. It starts off a thought. Then there's an action. And then your eyes are open. And you realize. The preacher was right. God was right. This was not the way for me to go. That prodigal son looked out there and everything out there looked good i'm gonna go that way that sounds pleasant to all my friends are doing it those are the wrong friends well that's where everybody's at and peer pressure you don't need to yield to peer pressure just what people are saying that's the in crowd well if you go that way you'll always fall he left and he went but that's not where it ended he found himself after all his pleasure looking at a bunch of hogs and saying, I think I can take them. I, I think I can get a few of them and get to that, that pus that they're eating. Not even real good food. I, I'm so hungry right now, I'm about to fight this hog. I, I think, I may not be able to handle that one, but I think I can get to these. Maybe I could run them off. And he said, hey, wait a minute. Before I straddled the fence, 
before I completely went over the fence, I had everything I wanted. I mean everything. Our hired servants had more than I have out here. We got it good with God. But sometimes we get to look at like a lot and saying, you know, it don't look so bad over there. Man, that looks like they're thriving. We heard it this morning. Boy, the wicked are, are doing, they're prospering. Boy, they look like they got it all together. And all of a sudden, Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed, and so is your family. Ah. All with a look and a desire for the wrong thing. Think on the good things. Do the good things. And God will bless. How do I know that? Well, what happened to Abraham? Sodom and Gomorrah are burning to the ground. Abraham gets up in the morning. <sighs> and looks over the plains. And I'm sure he probably had a tear in his eye. But you know where he was? He was safe. He was stable. And Lot was in tears. Why? Because Lot straddled the fence. Lot said, this looks good. Lot watched his wife perish. Lot lost children. As a matter of fact, Lot lost it all. All because something else looked better. What did Satan try to do to our Lord? Bow down to me and I'll give you all of this. <laughs> if you'll just bow to me. You know that's an old trick Satan's been using on everybody. He hadn't changed. It's the same, the same lure, the same bait. And people are biting him. Let there be no doubt about it as we close. The man that stands with God will be hated. We're not serving God for people to love us. I'm serving God because he loved me. Don't get it backwards. I don't serve God because I, I want everybody to love me. So I'm going, no, 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 no. I know God loves me and I love him for his love for me. So I serve him. The man that serves God will be despised by the world. As a matter of fact, snares will be laid in place for that man. He'll be set up. He'll be taken advantage of. He'll be threatened. He'll endure hardships. But one thing is most certain. That man will be blessed. You know, a lot of times, and we forget this quite often. I know I do. And I have to remind myself, and God reminds me quite often. The reason they're laying snares is because they're going through hardships. The reason they're trying to hurt you is because they are hurting. The reason, the reason they're trying to cause devastation in your life and instability is because they are very unstable. And they just can't understand how you have so much peace in your life. Peace of God passes all understanding. Because... You're serving him. God says he'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. There's nothing too hard for God. Just serve him. Don't, don't get caught up serving the world, serving flesh, serving self. Because you'll look up and you'll be in the hog pen. You'll look up on the other side of Sodom and Gomorrah with tears in your eyes. I'm telling you ahead of time to prevent the devastation because it's there. And if you keep your eyes open, you will see many marching down the side. You'll see it. And it'll look like they're doing good till all of a sudden you get the phone call. Hey, preacher, could you pray for me? 
Yeah, yeah, what's, what's, what's going on? Can we talk? What's happening, man? What's, what's, what's going on? And normally it's not in front of all their friends. But they want something, something and someone that's real. Let's be real. Let's truly serve God. The day is coming. You may not see it all now. But there's blessings. On the other side of the fence, there's no blessing. But serve the Lord with gladness. And watch God fill your cup. My cup runneth over. It wouldn't be running over like that if you go away from God. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for a reminder to choose and be intentional to serve you. God, if we're not careful, we can be sidelined by what may seem like a simple thing. What may seem like it's not so bad. But Father, if it doesn't please you, it's terrible. Father, I ask that you help each and every one of us to stand faithful. To keep an eye out for each other. Father, to challenge and encourage each other to continually choose each and every day to live for you. Father, help us to be about your business. Help us to be focused on that which you've given us to do. Not to be sidelined and distracted by what we see around us but to be to totally and wholly given to you and your cause and your purpose. May we fulfill it with our lives. May you be honored and glorified thereby. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray and we thank you. And thank you for loving us.